and action. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Coldwater Aquatics YouTube channel. My name is Brandon and this is our cold water fish room. Uh, for you guys that are new to the channel, this fish room currently is 57 degrees right now. This is in the basement of our house, an unheated basement. There is not even a furnace stuck down here. So it stays quite cool, but quite stable. Uh, none of these aquariums have any heaters in them. And uh, with that in mind, we keep a whole lot of North American native fish. Uh, we got all kinds of different stuff. A lot of Lipomus, uh, Lipomus sunfish species. We got little darters, shiners. Uh, we got a bowfin. We got some grass pickerel, some catfish. We got all kinds of stuff. So uh, appreciate you guys for watching this video. It's going to be quite a long video, probably close to an hour long. And uh, how we're going to kind of start it out is we're going to do a quick pan of the room, kind of show you guys everything we got real fast, and then we're going to come back and tank by tank drop these tanks down and go into detail exactly what's in them. So I hope you guys enjoy the video. Let's get right to it. All right guys, so this first tank down here, this is a, quite a unique tank. This is a six foot long tank, but this is actually a hand-built tank. Uh, I bought this used off of the old marketplace there on Facebook, but it's actually just made out of uh, aluminum extrusion that's actually bolted together, so it's quite cool. Uh, I'm not sure if it was originally an aquarium, if someone just re-trimmed it, or if it's you know a complete build from scratch, which is kind of what I imagine it is, but it's pretty neat nonetheless. It's not real, Super deep front to back, but it's pretty standard height, almost like a 55, touch shorter, touch shorter than a 55 right there, and maybe a little bit wider, but six feet long, so pretty cool tank. Um, this tank is just black diamond blasting sand substrate, some random rocks here and there. Uh, you'll see a trend in this uh, these fish tanks, a lot of algae, but we're okay, we're okay with that. 
you know it's normal it's a natural thing don't do a whole lot of maintenance down here but uh you know everything seems to work out pretty cool this is a pretty neat plant this is um hygrophilia coriamboza and it's actually pretty happy in here because you can see it's got some some nice little red and pink colors coming out on the top on this healthy stuff pretty cool this plant grows really well for us here it seems to do really good but uh, in this tank are a green sunfish, a rock bass, where is he? He was just over here. Somewhere, oh there he is. There's the rock bass, right there. And a common shiner. So, you guys will notice, uh, like I said, starting a video, keep a lot of North American natives. And uh, I, like, I like sunfish, I don't know what it is, I just do. So we're gonna, uh, we're gonna get some shrimp we're going to feed these guys and get you a little live action here on the camera of uh, feeding some sunfish here. So what we got here is uh, some raw shrimp. There you go, the rock bass got a piece. Yeah, the big green sunfish. He's got a large mouth. Pretty cool fish, kind of aggressive. He he uh, he bosses around the little uh, rock bass from time to time, but I mean he knows he's a tank. He's a tank boss for sure, but uh, he don't beat up on nobody. You can tell. I mean, look at him chomping down. This tank's highly scratched up, but it's an old tank. Gonna eat my finger. It's an old tank, and uh, a lot of these tanks that we have down here in the fish room we came across marketplace. Pretty much everything's been used. And uh, we've kind of built this fish room, like the description says, on a budget. So definitely, it's definitely been a, uh, a slow building process. I didn't just go out and drop lots of money to have all these tanks. I've picked them up over Marketplace and Friends and uh, Fish Club auctions and all sorts of stuff throughout the year. So uh, you'll notice sponge filters in all these aquariums down here. Sponge filters all around. We probably got... 35 40 sponge filters they all run off of a uh, alita al40 linear piston air pump and uh also lots of led shop lights so lots and lots of led shop lights once again trying to uh keep it in the budget if you will so pretty cool tank pretty cool fish and uh we're gonna move on all right, up here, this is, uh, actually these are both 20 longs, and uh, this has our tw a group of uh, rainbow shiners in it, and this has our group of rainbow darters. So we'll start here with the shiners. Pretty cool fish, not actually native to this part of the United States. Um, these, are, these are native to Southern, South, or Southern America, uh, Alabama, Tennessee, places down south there. This is a male right here, you can see He's got some colors on him. There's another male right there. It actually looks a lot nicer. So these guys are starting to color up down here and they definitely, they definitely get a whole lot prettier and color up more often in warmer water, I feel. Uh, but as you can see, well, it says 59 degrees down here, but it was 57 earlier. So it's chilly. It's not even 60 degrees. Uh, these are pretty cool fish. Probably a really good fish to get people started in the uh, North American native fish keeping with this fish because they'll pretty much eat anything. They'll, you know, they'll readily eat uh, flake food, pellets, all that stuff. Of course, they like live food, like everything, but they're very, very easy to easy to feed, and uh, I think that's why they would be a really good uh, start or you know stepping stone or starting point for someone to get into native fish because would be a pretty uh, pretty painless process, unlike some native fish. So we'll go ahead and drop some uh, some blood worms in here. And get a little frenzy going on. It's cool, very cool fish. They uh, they substrate spawn. I guess they like to lay their eggs on piles and uh, like rock piles and stuff like that. Oh, very cool fish. These came from White Cloud Dynasty. 
But uh, we've also had a small batch um, aquatic nest my wife had won on uh, Kenny over there, ABC Aquatic Biotope Creations channel. So we've got a kind of a combination of uh, shiners from both of those fellows. So Pretty nice fish. Uh, this tank has some uh, Rotala rotundifolia back here. And then this is also some more of the uh, Hygrophilia coriamboza. A little bit of dwarf sage back here in the corner and some more Rotala. Nothing fancy here, sort of a mixed substrate and rock piles, but they seem to be somewhat happy. At least they seem that way. And moving over here. So this is, uh, like I said, another 20 long. Plant-wise, uh, more hygrophilia. Here's some probably java moss or Christmas tree moss. I'm not... I've had a few different mosses, but I think for the most part, the mosses that always grow well for us down here have been the java mosses. And uh, that is a scraggly piece of rotala right there. But this is our group of rainbow darters. There's the male. You can see him perched back there on that rock. He's definitely the dominant male in this tank. Uh, there may be another male, a smaller one, but he's definitely uh, nowhere near colored up as well as this big one. Maybe that one right there. I'm not so certain. Maybe these are all females, I'm not sure. But this dude right here definitely is our male. These are cool fish. These are fish that I collected uh, in a local stream here. These are fish that are native to uh, Indiana and my waterways, my bodies of water around here directly. And uh, they're very cool fish as well. Uh, they don't have a, I guess they don't have a developed or highly developed swim bladder so they don't they don't have like a buoyancy that's why you see them when they swim they just kind of swim and then they land because they're naturally like a sinking fish they kind of land the bottom uh, these guys normally are mostly always found in uh, really turbulent waters like the, the little creek i caught these guys in it was like basically a little mini whitewater rapid and uh, they, they really like the riffle the water the water flow and all that stuff so uh, if you're looking to catch some, look for some small streams or rivers with some, so you know, some moving water and some riffles, and uh, get collected in there. You're probably going to come across some. So we'll see. I don't normally feed these guys bloodworms, but they, I'm sure they like them. Do they? Oh yeah, they do. See how they're keeping themselves up with their uh, pectoral fins there. Oh yeah, even the male's gonna come in for some. These guys are a little bit harder to feed, you know, uh, when like as comparing them to a rainbow shiner. A little more picky, see like there's a whole bunch of bloodworms there and they're going for them, but they're not like, they're not all about it. They really like shrimp. I feed them uh, some nice raw shrimp quite a bit. Uh, I think live food is really, really what they like, but. Uh, at the moment, I only have white worms, and trying to pull that off and do this at the same time is a little bit hard. So, but they're uh, you know they're not as easy of a fish to uh, to get to eat as per se a shiner, rainbow shiner would be. But nonetheless, they're definitely worth uh, a little bit of extra effort. Uh, I know Kenny's had uh, good luck getting his to eat like uh, bug bites and stuff like that. So, you def if you want to spend the money, you can definitely uh, you know get the right foods to get them to to get them to eat so yeah i think that's going to cover it we're going to move it on to the next tank all right we're over here this uh this is actually a 33 long this has got two dividers in it so i have a couple of these i need to pull the dividers out uh and just to convert them back into one full you know 33 long that's that's my long-term plan i'm not there yet uh, but I will be someday. But as at the moment, we're using it sort of as like a little mini grow out setup, kind of. We put we put our small fish up here. That's what I'm trying to say. And uh, in this first bin, we have our uh, white cloud mountain minnow fry. That we've recently had. Uh, I don't know. We probably noticed these guys like a month or so ago, maybe two months ago. And I believe there's ten or so in here. And very, very, very small. There's some really, really tiny ones. Like there's one, there's one right back there. Like little bitty guys, super small. 
but they're pretty neat. Um, these guys do really good in cold water tanks. These are obviously not a North American native fish, but a uh, but a fish that is native to China, I believe. I believe they're Chinese, Asian fish. And they can definitely handle the cold water. These guys have bred for us down here in, you know, 50 some degrees, 60 some degree water. We found these fry uh, was, would have been coming into winter. I mean, and it was cold down here, so. One, uh, one common aquarium strain fish that does really good in cold water tanks is the white cloud mountain minnow. So keep that in mind. And move, oh, let's see, also I didn't talk about the plants. More hygrophilia, definitely more moss. Here's some guppy grass. We do got some guppy grass. Duckweed not doing so good in this tank. Little thing for you, a little tip for you guys on duckweed. Surface agitation definitely takes out duckweed. So you can see this tank moves and bobs a little bit around here, kills all the duckweed. Some tanks where they get a little bit more chance to, to get away from the flow, duckweed does better. So if you want some duckweed to grow, definitely uh, maybe slow your flow down on your water. And if you don't want duckweed to grow, kick it up and get some, get some turbulence on the surface there and you'll take care of that problem. There's some more dwarf sedge. A lot of the, you guys will see a lot of the same plants over and over throughout this fish room. Basically, simple reasoning being that uh, I've bought plants throughout my years going to fish club auctions and events. And some plants do really well for us and others don't. So the ones that do really well, I just keep spreading them around and starting new tanks up. And the ones that don't do well, I just don't buy them anymore. So that's how, that's how we're handling that so far. Moving on to this section over here, these are Cyclosoma demiris fry that we've had. Uh, the parents actually in this fish room as well. We'll get to show them those here shortly. They're only a few tanks away, but these guys are a cichlid that breeds really well for us, and these are absolutely a cold water cichlid. I mean, look at these guys. They're an inch long, three quarters of an inch long. Some of them are half an inch long, and they're in 59, 60 degree water sometimes 50 some degree water and they're moving around and happy and eating and that's definitely a cold water cichlid in my book uh plant wise more dwarf sagittaria little guppy grass in here here and there a couple of these old dirt buster filters we got a few of these left in the fish room the little triangular ones this one too look at this thing it is just uh, silted up with uh well mom and all kinds of other goodness so yeah, Cyclosoma demiris right there. And over here, these are Australoheros SP Locale. These are another uh, another good cold water cichlid. I guess I should mention as well, both of these cichlids are native to southern South America and Uruguay. So they do really, uh, that's so far down in South America that the, the winters are actually quite cold, like parts of the US, and uh, they do really good in cold water. So couple of cichlids if you really want to keep in cold water you can really really keep in cold water cyclosomas uh, demiris and uh, these guys over here the the australo heroes so these are another uh, small bunch we have a whole tank of these below here I'm about to show you guys they do really well in cold water they absolutely do this tanks a little rougher but it has some dwarf sash some eh, that was guppy grass you see a lot of cyanobacteria. We got that kick in here. I haven't uh, haven't really done nothing, nothing uh, you know, to do to. Uh, how do I want to say this? I haven't used any chemicals really to treat cyanobacteria. I know uh, erythromycin, I guess, is a thing to use. I just haven't done it yet. So maybe I will. I don't know. Maybe some of the tanks that get so bad, I just tear them down and redo them. Moving on down here, this is a 55 gallon. And this has a little grass pickerel, Esox americanus vermiculatus, and a little bluegill there. Another Lapoma species. Macrohirus, Lapomus macrohirus. So, very cool. I love the grass pickerel. If you guys tune into the channel on Fridays for our live streams. You see us all the time feeding our big grass pickerel and this grass pickerel. And, and speaking of that, we probably should feed this guy, right? That's probably what we should do. So I move the camera in here and uh, we'll get some shrimp in his mouth. 
pretty cool fish. These are basically, the pickerel here, are basically like a dwarf version of a pike. And uh, they don't get a whole lot, they don't get a whole, uh, well, they do get bigger than this. This guy's probably seven, eight inches. They get, they get about 12 inches. And you'll see that when we show our, uh, our large one off because we have one that's right about 12 inches. So a little, little piece for the bluegill there. And we'll get a piece for the pickerel if he'll come over for it. And he sees a reflection, it kind of messes with him here. Sometimes it takes him a minute. Come on over here, buddy. There, did you see it? It's behind you. The bluegill's gonna get it. Oh, no. Come on, buddy. There you go. There you go. Like a savage. Took him a minute, but once he locked on, it was a done deal. So yeah, this guy, he's probably a touch over half grown, maybe about half size. Not much, not much uh, more than half size. And a little bluegill down here, he's got a long time to grow. But he's doing good. And he ain't getting killed, he ain't getting ate, everybody's happy. So that's what we're doing. Plants, uh, more hygrophilia. Actually, look at that, there's some crypts. We have some crypts. Looking at scruffily, but, and whatever this popcorn of, of uh, duckweed is, I don't know what's happening, but we did a little maintenance and must have a little bit better flow going on now because now we get the peppery popcorn duckweed looking deal going on but here's some uh italian val i believe the big old monster val and there's a couple really nice big chunks of that hygrophilia oh yeah look at that looking pretty nice looking pretty nice all right i'm gonna have to grab this out of here and we're gonna move it down to this bottom tank, which is also a 55. A little bit of different setup here. You can see we don't have her filled all the way to the top. And actually how I built this tank is I started out laying in these field rocks down here, kind of made a mound in the center. Then I've, I laid this piece of driftwood on the top and then I sort of backfilled the back and the top of it with sand. And uh, I went to the woods and grabbed a chunk of moss and brought it home and put it on there. And it was really cool for a while. Uh, we got some pretty cool videos of it back in the day. It was really neat. Now it's kind of all submerged and kind of turned into a swamp. And uh, you can see just some basic grasses and stuff growing in there now. But it's got a little bit of a, you know, it's got a coolness to it. That's some Brazilian pennywort growing on the top there. And down here, fish-wise, are more Australo heroes. So these are some of the parents, like that right there, I think is one of the parents to the Australo heroes. And then these are some older juveniles down here. Nobody's colored up because they're all in a community tank, but they get really, really cool colors when they get in and spawn in colors. Uh, there's some uh, dwarf sash. I think that's really about it, some dwarf sash. A little bamboo-y thing there. Yeah, pretty interesting tank. Doesn't get a whole lot of attention. I realize as I build fish tanks and put fish room together that the more tanks I put down low, the less attention I pay to them. So uh, moving on to the future, I'm gonna try to keep all my tanks like eye level, at least. I think that's a better, I think that's a better option. And, and you know, it puts it right there in front of your face all the time, so. Yeah, nothing fancy in here. This had a gravel substrate in it that I kind of sprinkled some sand on top of just recently here and kind of tried sprucing it back up a bit, but pretty interesting tank. We had a, a little, uh, well, we had a frog in it for a while, and then I had some sculpins in it for the longest time. And it was pretty cool because the sculpins would get up in the rocks at all the time. And uh, yeah, definitely got to get some more sculpin, but that's it. We're going to move on over to these 20 gallons so we got a regular 20 there and a 20 long next to it and we just moved some fish yesterday so they're probably going to be a little skittish we'll start here with the plants uh, these are these are dirted sand capped aquariums a lot of my aquariums are dirted and sand capped aquariums uh, i find that more one of the probably better ways to do a planted aquarium for me seems like 
economically as well because it's a lot cheaper than buying all that aqua soil and all that stuff so I basically just put potting soil on the bottom and I cap it with a nice thick layer of sand and uh, you're good to go for for a few years so in this one here are some Florida flagfish right there and then this guy over here is a uh, blue spotted sunfish so blue spot sunfish has been in here a while I just moved the Florida flagfish in yesterday and also in here somewhere is a golden top minnow well, he must be hiding behind the filters at the moment so I'm not seeing him nice clean tank pretty decently clean tank for around here some rotala some more hygrophilia uh, th this is all dwarf sag that's just not dwarf really and a little bit of moss in there nothing fancy I wish I could find that killifish. He's probably under the filter. Maybe we'll catch him. Uh, maybe we'll catch him toward the end here or something. But, yep, standard 20 gallon. Uh, actually, 20 gallons. That's the smallest size tank we get down here. These 20s. So uh, we just recently knocked down the last 10 gallon we had down here. So. Uh, 20 gallons are definitely our smallest tanks on here, and I just kind of want to try to keep moving forward on that and uh, setting up larger tanks from here on out. So that's the plan. All right, just recently moved these guys too. These are our white cloud mountain minnows. So these are the parents of uh, the fry you were seeing earlier. Some of them are really huge, like that big egg bound female there. There's another one there. They probably really need to spawn. And uh, hopefully they do so. I just moved them. I know that's probably not the smartest thing to do, but uh, I put a lot of moss in here from their old tank and even this big old blob of hair algae just to keep it reminiscent of home. And yeah, it's, like I said, these guys do really well down here. We've had, uh, we've had these for a few years and never really realized they were spawning until we decided to play uh, musical fish one day and we moved the fish out of the tank and then we left the tank empty and within the next day not even that like, like half a day uh, we started seeing a bunch of little fry popping out of the moss so maybe that's a plan maybe we need to get this tank set up pretty nice which it's getting there it'll it'll tie in pretty good here and then maybe we'll get another one just moving back and forth uh, yeah be cool to have a whole bunch of white clouds especially if you can breed them yourself I think we got probably what? There's probably 12 or 15 there. And uh, there's also also a shrimp in here, but I'm not seeing him at the moment. Some there's a neo in here, like a he looked like a brown, uh, like a brown, like natural type neo. And he's uh, he's got like a stripe down his back, but I don't see him at the moment. Maybe we can catch him later too. But. Once again, very good fish. Uh, if you if you're like, what's a what's a small aquarium fish that does good in cold water? These guys right here. White cloud mountain minnows do great. Water probably 59 degrees right now, and uh, you just seen the babies over there in the last you know tank we showed a few tanks back. They do really good. They like the cold water, and uh, yeah, more dwarf sage across the front here. This is some moss that just kind of turned into hair algae, and I just brought that over. And then this, more moss, Java moss, I believe. Little, uh, oh, Anubius. Little Anubius there. Not sure which one. I've had it for a while. Still growing, so apparently Anubius do pretty decent in cold water, too. So that takes us uh, down here. We'll look down here. This is... These are the parents to the Cyclosoma demiris from up there. So these are Cyclosoma demiris, big breeding pair of ours. We've got a couple of them. That's the male right there. They're good sized fish. They definitely are. And like I said, these guys are from Uruguay. They do really good in cold water. Uh, I think I'm at the point where there's a female coming out. I think I'm at the point where I'm going to. Put, probably just put a big community tank of these guys up 
so that we don't have a whole bunch of breeding going on. I think I'm going to do that both with the Damaris and the Australia Heroes. I'm going to just set up two good sized tanks, chalk all the little ones and the big ones together and just let them have a community deal, species only, and see how they go. But this is, uh, this is a little bit of an interesting tank. This is a 37 gallon and it's the same footprint as a 20 long or 29. It's just another like four inches taller or five inches taller maybe so i'd never seen one until i bought this one and bought this to use at my local fish store uh this is one of the tanks that has very few plants in it just two little pieces of italian valve on the back corners it really isn't doing too well but it was sort of a temporary setup and uh, i'm not sure if i want to leave it in the space because it does fit the space pretty well but i want to definitely if i do Put in a, put a probably a 29 down here or maybe not like i said i'm trying to get tanks off the floor so maybe i better just slow down and not contradict myself but black diamond blasting sand big old mossy piece of driftwood with the filter behind it that these guys just like to hide in front of so cyclosoma demaris very uh cool fish underrated fish actually uh invasive in florida because you know they've been probably released from fish farms or have gotten out from fish farms so they are uh, they are invasive to to uh, the United States but uh, these guys we bought and uh, these these guys parents were actually collected from Uruguay by the fellow we bought them from so pretty neat fish yeah they like to breed they like to breed for us that's for sure all right now we're gonna move on over to the 150 so I just put this tank together probably last year, I believe, and actually had to tear all the panels apart in this tank and bring it downstairs one piece of glass at a time. And uh, it's an old Oceanic 150. And the trim was all, it was, it was beat up and I broke it, taking it apart. And I decided I was gonna build a new frame. And what I did was I built framework just out of uh, pine, one by boards. So these are one by fours built the base uh, stand out of two by fours and then i set the bottom panel on it made it so it's just the size of the frame and then i built the tank up and then uh you know brought the trim up the sides to hold the bottom together and then just made the top piece here out of pine as well so it's not a whole custom deal but it is uh it is a pretty cool tank and uh it's my largest tank down here in the fish room and it has the potentially the fish that's going to potentially get the largest in it and he's not out at the moment of course mr bojangles our bowfin back there hiding out in the back maybe we can get him out with some shrimp i'm not sure he's he's normally when he's hungry he's out and when he's not he's not but let's try uh dropping a piece of shrimp in there for this guy maybe we can get uh get the smell in the water this is a this is a pumpkin seed sunfish here. We call this guy Pumpkinhead. Ricky helped us name Pumpkinhead here, and uh, he's a pumpkin seed sunfish. We have another one of these that we uh, still have in quarantine. And yeah, a pretty cool sunfish. Another Lapoma species. Pretty fish too. One of probably one of the more prettier sunfish. Uh, not as quite as pretty as a long ear, but not uh, not far off. In my opinion uh the tank down here this is a dirt tank with with black diamond blasting sand this has more hygrophilia coriamboza and more dwarf sash and it does have some random little sword plants and stuff that's some sort of a sword plant back there uh, it had a bunch of crypts in it at one time and we've kind of i don't know i guess we just melted them off they didn't make it through the winter for us so uh, and it does have more cyanobacteria and all that stuff but basically just hygrophilia and uh, dwarf sized cherry like there's a couple more sword plants but they're struggling down there probably need more flow in this aquarium I have a sump for it I just don't have it set up so maybe someday I can set it up and get a little more flow in here but uh, we're pretty happy with it But yeah, mr. Bojangles not coming out. He's hiding back here behind this mossy 
uh, algae covered piece of wood. He's our bowfin. He's not a Mia Calva. He's a Mia, the other one. Ocina did he? I can't really remember exactly. But he's back there chilling. We'll see if we can get him on some other, uh, maybe some beat roll or something. But down here, we got another 55 gallon. And this has our hybrid sunfish in it. A wargill. This is a warm mouth bluegill hybrid. And I know that because he's got a big old mouth that opens up like that. So he looks kind of like a bluegill, but he's got a sunfish mouth. So maybe we can get a piece of shrimp in here and you can see him open his mouth up. Oh yeah, there you go. See that? <laughs> he's got a mouth on him. That's how you know he's not a bluegill. Because you can pretty much lip this fish, you know. I believe I lipped him when I caught him. But he's in here with uh, some yellow bullhead. There's the big guy. Bossy, bossy fish. That's why they're down here. They don't pick on him because he's too ornery. Uh, but they picked on every other fish that we've had. <laughs> Sunfish definitely have the will to eat. They are very fast, ferocious eaters. And you can see there, he just, he wants to have it all. So, a couple more small bullhead in here. And uh, not a whole lot of plants, really. Just a little bit of uh, hygrophilia and then this floating little whatever up here. A bunch of moss more than anything. <laughs> but yeah, that's our, that's our hybrid sunfish. Um, let's see, let's move on over to this tank here. There's Mr. Bojangles, came off for a piece of food. <laughs> he got it. Pumpkin head's watching him. Oh, he's got a mouthful. Yep, yeah, that's our bowfin. Being a little finicky with his shrimp. This guy's acting like they eat too much. <laughs> All right, moving on. Over here to this 90 gallon tank here. So this has uh, some little weirdo fish in it. Got a black nose crappie here, a yellow perch, and a common shiner. And uh, look at this dude. He wants some food. Give him some food up here. Oh, wait a minute. Hang on a minute. All right, let's try this again. There he goes. You guys coming? You guys coming? No? The, the shrimp's falling on them. <laughs> uh, so yeah, this is a 90 gallon tank. Um, dirted, dirted, planted, sand capped, black diamond, blasting sand, more hygrophilia. Uh, oh, look at this shiner, he's getting frisky. Oh, he wants that shrimp, that's why. More uh, dwarf sash, more hygrophilia. So yeah, sort of same deal. Nothing fabulous. Uh, Crappie just eat a, see ate a leaf. Try to throw another piece in there. See if we can get the crappie to get a little feeding action going on. He's hungry. Oh, oh, nope. It's behind you, bro. I'm just gonna get it. Throw in another piece. Sh uh, Shiner will get it. Good cleanup crew right there. Put a, give him a big piece. These guys are pretty cool. Um, got this actual crappie from Jonah's Aquarium. I didn't catch this guy around here, but they are in this local area. This one, uh, this we had two. This is our last remaining one, and he had a little, we had a little bit of issue with some anchor worms on this guy, but I feel like we've got him pretty cleared up. Look at this guy. He's just gluttonous. <laughs> He's got a mouthful. Yeah, this is our 90 gallon. We rebuilt this tank probably eight months ago, I think. It started leaking on us. Tore it down, recocked it. I never really do a, I never really try to do a really nice job when I caulk tanks. I just try to caulk them thick and heavy so they don't leak. So that's what I did on this one, and it's held up good. Um, yeah, we've had this tank for quite a while. This is actually for a 90. It's really thick. It's like half inch or thicker glass. I don't know. It seems thicker. It, it seems thicker than this 125. 
it looks thicker and it's heavy super heavy tank old school tank had the wood trim on it we had actually painted it black but yeah a couple of goobers in here these guys here we enjoy them uh down here this is actually the last tank that i put up and i just kind of put it up in desperation because i had these guys out in the ponds and uh it got really cold so i wanted to bring them in i didn't want to lose them these are some more cyclosomas but these are cyclosoma uh, sp rudas a little bit of a different uh species of cyclosoma also from uruguay very similar to the damaris just a little different in color nothing fancy happening down here just more black diamond sort of set it up real quick no plants this is the only tank that you'll see in this fish room down here that doesn't have any life plants or any plants at all in it and basically just kind of a temporary deal for these guys they are pretty cool fish they got a lot of blue a little bit of orange on them kind of hard to see not the best lighting for sure i like how their fin or their uh, scales are sort of outlined in a black that's a pretty cool uh, cyclosoma trait, must be. Let me move this light over here. See what happens. And get a little. There's the male. Those are those are both males back in the corner, all piled in a corner. And that little one there is a female, and then the one behind the filter is uh, also a female. But there you go. Turn, guy. Show us yourself. Pretty pretty fish. Kind of reclusive, a little skittish. But. They're hanging down here in a sort of darkish tank anyways so and they're on the floor and i probably need to get them off the floor because like i said earlier tanks on the floor i don't seem to to uh you know pay as much attention to i guess you'd say so moving on moving on to the uh this is pretty pretty iconic tank for this channel and some pretty iconic fish in here this is a 125 gallon I actually bought this tank. I won it in an auction, the Grand Valley Aquarium Club auction. I won it for $50. And uh, I was sitting down in a chair and they were auctioning it off and it was way like in the corner of this gymnasium and nobody was bidding on it. So it was. I was like, well, 125 gallon for 50 bucks. What the heck, I'll bid on it. And I, I bid on it once and then I bought it and I ended up winning it. So what we did was uh, we got to looking at it and it had, the trim was cut right here. So what I did was uh, use some of that plastic weld. And you can see there, I just welded the frame back up. And you can see there. So, you know, things ain't gotta be perfect, guys. None of this stuff down here is perfect, but it's dark enough where you can't see it. <laughs> so that's what I did. I mean, I took this tank and brought it downstairs. Really was nothing wrong with it. Came with the stand and everything. And uh, Chili Willy Fish Room, shout out to Aquarium Cop. Rest in peace, brother, LRB. These are some sticker guys I got. LRB used to be local to us, so we used to we used to meet him up at some uh, local events and all that stuff before we moved to Florida. But we've had this tank set up for a while. We've had a whole slew of different kinds of fish in it throughout the years. And currently, it houses our warm mouth here, Mr. Grumpy Pants, who's got a little battle wound on his side there from this guy. Over here, the water wolf. This is our large grass pickerel I was talking about earlier. He's right around 12 inches. Esox americanus vermiculatus is this guy. And this is another Leopomus species. Uh, the, the war mouth there. And then also another one down here, we got another red ear sunfish, another Leopomus species. So, uh, plants in this tank are getting a little raggedy and i think what's happened is i've had this tank set up this is also a dirted uh blasting sand capped aquarium i've had it set up for like probably four years now or close to it you could probably look back on the channel and find a video but uh, i didn't i never really used like a big fancy mix of potting soil and amenities i just basically use like a basic organic potting soil and i think what's happening is it's sort of starting to lose its nu nutrients or value whatever it sort of looks like stuff's kind of turning a bit yellow like it's a there's a deficiency somewhere but uh there's another crypt we've had in here this one's actually melted back a few times look at this guy he's going banana he's doing the snaky thing and uh yeah this crypt's melted back a few times and it's uh got some rotala rotunda folia there 
Here's some more big uh, Italian valve. Oh, now Mr. Grumpy Pants is over here getting excited. And they, they think they see some shrimp they want to eat. And uh, what do we got? Some more, uh, no, those are, those, those are more crips. Yeah, those are more crips. They're just, they're, they've changed so much that I can't even really recognize them. Uh, some hygrophilia there. Some really scabby looking bacopa. Mad butt. And some more Italian valve over here in the corner, but. This tank is definitely seeing better days. It's looked really, really nice. It's looked amazing at times. It looks rough now. It's got big fish in it that are that move around and bash around and tear stuff up. Like this guy here, he he's like a native Oscar equivalent in size. And he has just destroyed the bottom of this tank and I've had to kind of throw more gravel in it. So I feel like the fish probably have upset the the you know the natural things that was happening in the dirt for the plants and uh sort of lost its deal over time but it is what it is you want to throw some fish in, or some shrimp in here see if we can get some he's going to want to eat it all this is the case and if you guys tune in on fridays you'll notice this and with pretty much with all these sunfish the sunfish want to eat everything all the time so they're gonna he's gonna try to eat it all but the pickerel when he gets a chance he absolutely will come for it so he's looking for it he just He's something about sunfish. Sunfish are very, very, uh, you know, ready to go. They like, they pay attention. See what I mean? Like, he's all over it. He's all over it. He's bam. And the pickerel's like, well, what are you doing if you're all over it? I'm not, I'm not even going to come. So, do we have any more bigger pieces? This guy's going to try to hog it all. I got my, one of my shrimp techs over here helping me, uh, feeding. There you go. Oh, oh, did he get it? I don't know, it looked like he missed it. Yeah, are we out of shrimp? We don't have no bigger pieces? Okay, so we might not be able to get a, a full attack on this one, but uh, if you guys do want to see these fish fed, we feed, uh, we feed pretty regularly every Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on our uh, live streams we do every Friday. Yep, see what I say? Mr. Grumpy Pants, he'll eat every piece. That's what he does. And the pickerel's like, huh? He's confused because he thinks there's a glare and, and the sunfish is like, I'm just gonna eat it all. So, it is what it is. But this guy's very cool, we definitely enjoy him. Probably one of my more favorite uh, fish in the fish room. Uh, I really do like the bowfin, but the bowfin is so reclusive that sometimes it's just more, sometimes it's easier to enjoy uh, a fish that's more interactive. And this guy definitely is interactive. So is Mr. Mr. Grumpy Pants there. <laughs> he just tries to eat it all, all the time. So, there you go. You guys eat it all, brother. That's what you wanna do. Don't make him, don't make him feel bad though, he gets plenty. He definitely gets plenty. All right, moving on. We got two more tanks left, and then this is a done deal here. Onto this tank. This is the metal frame. This is a 75 gallon metal frame Pemco tank that my buddy gave me, and I fixed her up. And it's got a pretty eclectic group of fish in here, if I must say so. Another common shiner, which you've seen three or four of these by now, but here is a pretty cool dollar sunfish which is a uh, smaller species of sunfish. It is a Lipoma species, but it's a little bit smaller. They are from uh, down south, I believe, south, maybe uh, eastern and southern United States. Very cool. Uh, also, another really cool fish is this guy right here. This is a central mud minnow. We've got a couple of these, very cool. Umbra limi, they are like, they're uh, closely related to the pike, I guess. Very neat fish. For a small fish, they are super aggressive. And very cool. Uh, what else we got? We got a blunt nose minnow right here. And then there's also a black sided darter in here as well. As, uh, is it back there? There's a black. Oh no, that's a, that's a, that's a white sucker back there. Can't really see him, but he's hanging out back there. And then there's another mud minnow down there. That, that I believe is our female mud minnow. There's also uh, a few mosquito fish right here. 
few mosquito fish and there it is there's a black sided darter hanging out down here on the bottom with a couple flag fish somewhere around here i'm not sure exactly oh, i scared that darter but pretty cool tank um this is actually a maple tree root ball we're kind of looking at the bottom of it and it's just got all sorts of the it's got all the algaes on it pretty much and uh so does this whole tank this tank has lots of hair algae and all that stuff covering everything plants mostly just uh dwarf sagittaria for the most part and algae and uh maybe we'll th let's throw some bloodworms in here we'll give these guys a little bit of bloodworms they seem to enjoy that this is also a pea gravel aquarium that i've kind of sprinkled in some uh sand on top of so here let me put some bloodworms in here I don't know, Mr. Sunfish, are you going to eat any of those? Yeah, you will. Okay. He usually likes his shrimp. But most everybody likes the bloodworms. I got a little shrimp for him. There you go. Put him a little piece of shrimp in there. He'll tag. Oh, wait, look at that. Bam. Smacked it. Oh, the little uh, mosquito fish was going for it. Man, I'll tell you what, those shiners. <laughs> They're about like sunfish. They'll eat everything. We got what we got left for shrimp. We got any shrimp left? Mm -hmm. Okay, save what we got for the next one. Oh, touch a bud minnow. Try to eat a plant. Probably right here. Was if you were if you were going to ask me one of my favorite small native fishes, this guy right here. And uh, I really do love these guys. They're so cool so so cool these are these were caught locally here by us and uh they're just so neat man this dude he's on it he's like he's give me some more he's hungry <laughs> all in all pretty cool tank and uh definitely enjoy having a metal frame here and enjoy having a big metal frame you don't really hear about a lot of big metal frame tanks anymore so i feel i feel cool to have a. 75 gallon metal frame so that leaves us to one final tank right down here and this is basically a quarantine tank for this uh, pumpkin seed there's another pumpkin seed sunfish here you can see his fin is a little bit messed up there we've been watching him uh, we just moved him into this tank uh, last night so he's only been in here a day and uh, the tank I had him in before was sort of just a temporary deal as I was watching him. And then I figured to put him in this tank, get him under a little bit of light, get a little better view on him. So he's uh, he's similarly looking, similarly sized as well to uh, pumpkin head over there. And the tank's really nothing to look at. So uh, a little bit of, a uh, little bit of, uh, is that, that's Bacopa. No, wait a minute. That is not. That's Rotala. It just looks really good. There he goes. Yeah, that's uh, that's actually Rotala. Rotala rotundifolia. That stuff there, it looks kind of scraggly up here. And when you see it like this, it's kind of hard to recognize. But if you look at the top of it, it does those big, thick little flowerette sort of deals. All behind you, buddy. He'll get it. Also in here, some uh, dwarf Sagittaria. That's really about it. We had a uh, we had the flag fish in here and uh, the golden top minnow. <laughs> you guys have plant in his mouth. <clears throat> and uh, we just moved him out and thought this would probably be a better better tank for just a quarantine tank, sort of down here on the bottom. I mean, you can see it's still dirty. It needs some cleaning, but this is also another dirty sand capped aquarium. So, yeah, I think that's going to wrap it up. I'm not real sure what we're going to do with him. Maybe we'll move him in with uh, the other pumpkin seed and the bowfin. Not real sure. But for now, he's down there chilling out. So I think that's going to wrap it up for the video, guys. Uh, like I said, it was quite long, and we're going to run probably some B-roll here at the end and some uh, music if you guys want to chill and hang out a little bit longer. But... 
appreciate you guys all for tuning in and watching. Hope you're all having a fabulous day whenever you're watching this in the future. All that good stuff. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, everything, all the time. Appreciate you guys so much. And tune in on Fridays, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time when we live stream. You guys can come see these fish live every Friday. And, uh, yeah. Appreciate you guys. And until next time, we'll catch you all later.